That's me clapping because I have video now. Um, there are a couple things that you should know about Jackie Schimmel. A, I'm a star. <laughs> B, I live for the lights. And C, I can be bought. So if you're watching this at home, it's very awkward. I'm like looking into a camera. There's like a lighting situation. I've got a rogue piece of cardboard. My at-home office is now like this Vacock de set. It is 7.36 a.m. on a blissful Thursday morning. I did hit you with a little bit of a lip gloss this morning. Can you fucking imagine the audacity if I came on here for my first video fucking episode in full Hollywood glam? I would just like to address people that do glam for video podcasts. A, you're late to the fucking party. That means you started podcasting like three to four years ago. Um, also, it's just fucking embarrassing, okay? It's called Face for podcasting. It's called personality that transcends media portals. Okay. I've been kicking it audio for fucking nine years. I am in my 10th year of podcasting. Woo -hoo, woo. And now we're finally doing fucking video. Um, so that's embarrassing and sad. But here she is, lights, camera, action, and me without a stitch of makeup on, except for this Givenchy Q Anne Hathaway. A little, a little lippy. I'm going to put some on. Oh, yeah. Free plug for you. I will not link it. I will be gatekeeping this one. Can we talk about gatekeeping for a fucking second? I don't like the narrative and the bad PR that gatekeeping has gotten on the tickety talks. I'm talking to you, Gen Z. You fucking ruin everything. Quite literally, everything. I have been gatekeeping since out of the womb and I only this is actually the rhythm of my dance floor this is my business model okay gatekeep uh exploit no it would be gatekeep hoard exploit cash which is I mean the metaphor of all time um I am leaving for Paris tomorrow I have been sprucing up on my French which is très mal Nope. Trey. Is that Spanish? Trey mal. Un chat mange un croissant. No, no, no. Yeah, that means the cat is eating a croissant. So that will get you far. Um, leaving tomorrow morning, like I said in last week's episode, I was starting to feel, dare I say, maternal, guilty for leaving my seven-month-old baby, who you could probably hear shrieking in the background. He's found his larynx, or is it the esophagi or the trachea? He's found his vocal cords, and he is frying them like a basic bitch in front of a ring light. Guess what? Okay, two, two fucking things. First of all, did I Amazon Prime a sticky pad for the back of my phone to, you know, suction cup to a wall so that maybe I could take some photos and a sick outfit yes I did disgusting secondly did I also google Alex Earl Light and Amazon Prime that as well she believed she could and she did here's why I no longer feel guilty about abandoning my family for greener Parisian pastures if you will last night um like the Mother Teresa, single mom who works two jobs, who loves her kids and never stops, with gentle hands. In the arm of a fighter, I'm a survivor. By the way, it, it hits very different singing when there is a camera and lights set up in your home. Something about like the impromptu, the Melissa Etheridge uh, vocal stylings that I've provided, Tattoo, um, what other songs? Lisa Loeb, Natalie Merchant, Natalie Imbruglia. It just, it resonates so different when you are not staring vacantly with your soul coming out of your fucking sphincter into a goddamn camera. But here we are. Um, last night... I was giving Clyde a bath and he has a bit of a post-nasal drip situation, uh, post-flu shot, and he was just like backed to the nines. It runs in the family. It's part of his heritage. You know, we are constipation. We are the world and we are constipation. 
I just watched that documentary. It's on the tip of the tongue. So he was a little, like, I could tell unrested in the colon. So I put him in the bathtub, okay? I put a little bit of a eucalypti oil in there, which don't you fucking dare slide into my DMs. I feel like this is opening up a whole other vortex of hell where these Gen Zers and the mama bears with a fucking, I just, I just can't. I can't. By the way, the rosacea flare up. Are we there? There we go. There we go. Can't make this shit up. Um, I feel like the portals of hell half opened and I am going to be barraged by these fucking idiot Gen Zers and the fucking mama bears who are like, um, hate to be this person, but um, did you know that eucalyptus oil has hypoallergenic um, deathly properties and exposing your son before the ages of three could open them up to anaphylaxis. I hope you fucking get anaphylaxis. I'm going to deep dive whatever allergies you have and I'm going to red rover, red rover, roll on over and slather every doorknob. Okay. Don't make me get my jiffy. Don't make me get my skippy. By the way, it's jiff and skippy. I fucked that up a couple weeks ago. My B. <clears throat> Need a little water. Okay, landing the plane. So I'm tending to my son in the tub, okay? Rub a dub dub, two hoes in a tub. <laughs> and Tamara and Eddie vibes. If you know, you know. So I'm I'm tending. We're doing the little, you know, the cloth. I'm doing the crocodile. I've got a little fucking ducky because I'm adorable. And all of a sudden, this fucker starts getting real red real fast. And I can tell he's like crowning a Buick out of there. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Now, he does this a lot, but most of the time it's a false alarm. You know, for sport, for shits, for gigs. He's got a great sense of humor. This time, there was like a bead of sweat (laughs) coming down his fat fucking face. And I was like, this dude is about to hot box explode Mount Vesuvius this free to bathtub another fucking free plug beep it out so I'm sitting there by myself just so fearful for my life for when I have to lift that fat fucker up and just see the sludge in his undercarriage okay and I was kind of peeking around and I didn't really see anything so I thought oh false alarm no big I had just gotten my highlights done and the blow dry was blowing, okay? I took all of my tracks out. I don't have one singular lone rat tail K-tip anywhere on this scalp. We are free balling it Ashkenazi style. So I was really more concerned uh, uh, about my hair than the overall sanitation, him ingesting fecal matter, you know, the state of his bathroom, cleanliness, you know, shit getting in the grout of my vertigo-inducing marble tiles that I drove three and a half hours to, you know, Modesto, California to acquire. I just wanted to protect my fucking hair, okay, because this was supposed to be my pre-flight Parisian blow dry. Obviously, you got hose in different area codes. The second I land in Paris, I get a fresh one because I don't know what the moisture level is, whatever. So I immediately pick him up. I see the sludge running up the back of his fucking body. It's practically in his neck folds, okay? It's like a hair, a fecal hair mask. I see the bathtub, which is covered in shit. When I pick him up, be, you know, fun fact, write this one down. When fecal matter sits in eucalypti water for approximately 13 minutes, the natural form of the feces, this one, this is good guys. I'm really glad this is my first video episode. The, <coughs> the my throat's closing up. The matter, the fecal matter becomes incredibly watery, even more so than before. So now that I have lifted him, the feces hath spread to the bathwater, is dripping off his back, is dripping all over the floor, is dripping all over me. I'm holding him like this, like this is not my son. I don't know him. Like I was ready to just 
put him out on the pavement and power wash him with a fucking hose. But God forbid we have a proper hose because my dipshit husband, I mean, everything that we have pool equipment wise, outdoor equipment wise is broken. So that wasn't really an option. So I immediately go into panic mode because now I'm trying to workshop, strategize how to rid myself and my son of the fecal matter. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to plop his ass in the sink. So I immediately like turn on the sink and then I kind of just like put his ass in it. But then I'm like, wait, that's not good for plumbing. Now it's going to go down the sink. There is shit everywhere. Shit everywhere. I finally just laid him down on a towel on the floor, took three and a half minutes trying to homeland carry Matheson map out with red strings how to get him clean keep my blow dry and also not have to touch a fucking thing and quarantine the mess so that Andrew can wake her fat ass up the next morning you know with a mop and bucket and just get in the crevices of the fucking marble tile <sighs> this is why I drink um I managed to kind of haphazardly lay him down on his changing table and then give him the old horse bath. If you know, you know. Okay. As someone who's encountered many a horse bath from the years 2008 to 2010, um, I'm pretty well versed. You need to have at least five towels, some submerged solely in water, some submerged in some type of a body wash soap situation, and then obviously your dry towel. So after a proper horse bath, I laid his ass down and had a little cry. And then I clutched my passport and I said, bitch, we're going to fucking Paris. And all that like guilt and longing to be home with my family very quickly evaporated. And, you know, when the universe sends you a little gift, um, you take it, you metabolize it, you take a big old whiff and you keep it fucking moving. Welcome to church, everybody. I also started watching Griselda last night. And are we going to talk about the fact that Sofia Vergara kind of looks like Countess Luann in Griselda? And I do not mean that as an insult in any way, shape, or form. I think Sofia Vergara is obviously stunning. I think Countess Luann is obviously stunning. I'm just saying maybe it's like the jumpsuits and the hair Something feels very Countess Luann. If that was a Venn, is it a Zen diagram or a Venn diagram? The two circles, lots of overlapping. Even Andrew was like, that looks like fucking Countess Luann. I'm like, I know. Anyways, you know, it's not really sticking for me. It's something that I can like haphazardly watch with Andrew. And we have so few shows that we can enjoy together. Um, so I will continue on the Griselda journey if I ever have a daughter, I'm naming her fucking Griselda. <laughs> Can you imagine? Griselda Schimmel hyphen Haas. It has a ring to it. And her middle name will be Rosacea. Griselda Rosacea Schimmel hyphen Haas. That's a homecoming queen if I've ever fucking heard one. I am interested in Griselda and her story because I have always said that I would be and I really, really mean this, like from the depths of my soul, I would be the best drug dealer ever. I've been saying this since I was in second grade. Before drug dealers were even a thing or a presence in my brain, I have always felt that I would be an amazing drug dealer. Not felt. I speak in definitives. I know I would be an amazing drug dealer. Here's why. I would never get high on my own supply. It's like embarrassing to say, and I'm like not proud to say this, especially on fucking video, but unfortunately, I have not entered my recreational drug era yet. I'm thinking this might be my year, um, or maybe when I decide to get pregnant the next time. <laughs> um, clip it, Gen Z. Clip it. Clip. Fucking life ruiners. Um... I would be amazing at drug dealing because I could play smart and stupid. And I think that's very imperative for drug dealers, you know, because like when the, you know, microscope is on you, you're like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. Like, what? Me? Drugs? Never. But then you're also like wheeling and dealing on the side, you know, because I've got that like street savvy, like cut a bitch nature. I would also do amazing in jail. 
My sister has said that since we were like seven years old. I don't know why. I would like, I would just lean in. I would lean the fuck in and I would really reframe my experience. I would be like fucking, I don't know, Teresa, free tree. I'd be like Jen Shaw. I would be like making fucking lanyards and scissoring. <laughs> I would never. I Well, maybe if it was like a really long-term thing, but I think that's not my journey as a scissor sister. I would be amazing at drug dealing, jail, and the bachelorette, period. And also emceeing funerals. That just came to me in the midnight hour like three days ago. I would, let me tell you, after I get canceled after doing this fucking video podcast, I am available to MC and like lighthearted roast your dead fucking relatives. I will for sure be emceeing Gloria's funeral. I'll be like, bitch can't cook. She loved bleach, expired turkey meat. She'd steal your man on the fucking Passover Seder block. But man, what would I say? No, that's not good. <laughs> this is not a good endorsement. I'd be like, your grandma was a cunt. But she was a lovely cunt. And for that, we raise a glass. Cheers, Grandma Bertha. Like, I would just come in there, like, detached from the situation. And I would get, like, little bits from all the family members. And I would kind of make it interesting, fun, but also, like, reinforce family tensions for the Shiva. It's an interesting business model. I'm going to think about it. And the Bachelorette, I would fucking, oh, my God. I would tear up. This would be my strategy. And you can apply these just to your everyday life. You hit that bachelorette mansion, okay? Actually, I not me as the bachelorette. I want to be a contestant on The Bachelor. This is what I would fucking do. You go into that house, okay? And you make friends. Not too good of friends. Not besties. BFF, A-E, A-E. Because that will bite you in the ass later in life. Because if it comes down to you and one other girl and you guys are best friends. And then she sees the game you're running, you know, after the final rose ceremony. It's no bueno. But what you do is you go in there, okay? And you befriend everyone. Light surface. You bring an air of false insecurity, okay? Not too insecure where then you're like the Debbie Downer victim, but just enough so you eliminate yourself from the competition with the women's, okay? So you go in there. You're like, ah, oh, you know, you act a little nervous. You act a little aloof. You act a little damsel in distress, but not too much. Not like Bambi-eyed bitch, so you're not um, a victim, but you're not a valor. You're kind of floating in the in-between, in the interim, okay? Then when you are with The Bachelor, you go go, 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 you go full court fucking press, okay? You are assertive. You are confident. You are dominant. You are taking no for not, you are not taking no for an answer, Okay, you are there for the right reasons. Your head is in the fucking game. Okay, one on one time, group date, passive, cool, aloof. One on one. Ah! That's a beautiful face. Honestly, you could implement that life strategy to your workplace. You know, you want to be like the office cooler girly. Shaka shaka. What is it? I'm probably doing the wrong fucking hand gesture. Is this the shocker? Is this like one in the pink, three in the stink? I don't fucking know. Please don't cancel me. I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking, what is it? Shaka shaka cowabunga, baby. It's applicable, you know, in every quadrant of life. Anyways, Griselda, a must watch. Um, What else? Oh, I have topics today because I just like wanted to stay on course because the video element is really fucking with my flow. Where is Kate Middleton? Do we care? Is it a health issue? Uh, hopefully not. Is it a marital issue? Unclear. Not sure. People are very up in arms about the whereabouts of Kate Middleton because I guess she hasn't been seen in like two and a half months. And then Prince Hare, what's, what's her fucking husband's name? The bald guy with an overbite? William. Really popping off the pages of life, Prince fucking William. So he like didn't attend, by the way, the details of my storytelling and like my headline skimming, like don't listen to me. So Prince William 
bailed on Queen Elizabeth or her, his dad. Did the dad die? Big royal family buff over here. So the, the king maybe died and then now he's not going to a funeral. He's not going to some fucking family funeral because of something, like an obligation. And Kate Middleton hasn't been seen. Here's my theory. I think Kate Middleton got a BBL and it went wrong and now she's recovering. Or maybe she got like some form of a plastic surgery and it went awry. As someone who is very intrigued by plastic surgery and now that I'm moving to video I think it could be a write-off. Here's what I'm going to do. Tits to the fucking heavens. Um, I think it's a little late in life for a rhinoplasty. I probably would have done that around age 15 and RIP to my mother she always told me that if I needed one like she would 100% tell me so with that said I'm gonna keep it you know anti-semitism is running rampant in this country so the least I could do is keep you know my slight Ashkenazi featured nose um I'm interested in doing some form of a something something here gobble gobble it's your girl. And for now, I think that's it. But the tits have to get done. It's not even like, it's just not even a joke. It's not even a bit. It's just outrageous. I read somewhere on Instagram that like everyone, it's fashion week and Saint Laurent is bringing back the no bra thing and in homage to their new fashions, nobody's wearing bras in Paris. I'm not trying to get... Uh, skid marks on my nipples. If I went braless, I would be dragging my tits down the fucking cobblestone streets, picking up croissant crumbs in my under tit. So that's never going to fucking happen. I need underwire. I need bungee cords. I need Jesus Cristo. And I need a fucking surgeon ASAP. But this isn't about me. This is about Kate Middleton. We don't know where the fuck she is. And we're looking for her. Katie, I got you, girly. Okay, obviously, I have talked quite a bit about my problematic breastuses and been very vocal about the fact that I'm always wearing a bra to sleep, to fly, to run, to dream, to cook, to bathe, basically uh, all the time, 24-7, which is why I am such a passionate bra enthusiast. And if I endorse something, it's good for the girls, Okay. Us and our two little friends, which is why I absolutely love Honey Love bras. They have truly revolutionized the bra game. Um, underwire, it kills. Like the straps digging into your shoulder blades. I love this Honey Love crossover bra. It is so comfortable. It is going to be your new go-to. It doesn't dig into your shoulders because it's a cross back. It's so breathable. It's so comfortable. It is a bra that you are not dying to take off the second that you get home. Um, I've experienced that for years. I mean, I would walk into my house and it was like girls gone wild okay honey love has changed the game besides the comfortability factor the design is just top notch they have these like cute sexy mesh inserts so there's a little sheerness there's a little breathability it's like kind of an elevated design and it just kind of sexes up a more supportive bra that you know typically other brands look like parachutes. This is just like a highly stylized, sexy, supportive, comfortable bra. Um, they also have like a great relaxed lounge bra, which is their V bra that I love. I sleep in it. It's really designed to lift and separate. So it's got molded cups. It's not like one of those sad little shelf bras that creates the uniboob. We are in the constant pursuit of never having a uniboob. And that's why we love Honey Love. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com forward slash Bible. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com forward slash Bible. After you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it once again for the best bras on the market. Bitch Bible endorsed. You're going to save 20% off when you go to honeylove.com forward slash Bible. And please let them know that your girl sent you. You're welcome. I think I should probably start drinking for these podcasts. Like maybe we shift it from the early mornings to late, late nights. Like maybe I pop, you know, my recreational under-the-counter sleep aid of choice 
have one and a half martinis and start getting a real fucking slob kebab foaming at the fucking mouth just being like fuck Gen Z which is basically what I do anyways um what were we going to talk about Ooh, I wasn't going to touch this one because it feels a little dicey a little close to home even though it couldn't be further away from home but uh, lots of lawsuits in the Bravo universe, okay? And this is why we can't have nice things. It's hard to have an opinion on this because on one hand, I, you know, want to use <laughs> my platform for good, but I also just want to be myself and enjoy my stories on my sofa and like not, you know, bear the brunt of the world on these brittle gaunt jewel encrusted motherfucking shoulders so like everything you say is like sliced and diced and minced like you're at a fucking benihana but i'm gonna be honest um leah mcsweeney is it leah sweeney mcsweeney i don't give a fuck she is suing andy cohen um she is claiming that they did cocaine together uh kathy griffin also came forward this morning saying that andy cohen offered her cocaine twice before Watch What Happens Live. I'm going to be honest. On one hand, you know, people are going to say it's an abuse of power. It's, I, I don't look at it that way. I think if Andy Cohen, okay, who has given us so many gifts, wants to, you know, snort a line. Is that what the kids say? Is that what it is? If he wants to do rails, okay, before bleeding out live on television – I don't really have a problem with it. And I think if you're, everyone has the right of refusal. People are like saying that this is Matt Lauer adjacent. I it, This is not forcing sexual contact on anybody. This is like, hey, I'm partaking. Want to join? Some would call it hospitality. Um, you can say no. Leah Sweeney, McSweeney, Le- let's call her Leah. Lee's, well, Leah, Leah, Lily. Um, she is saying that knowingly pushing alcohol or drugs on someone with addiction problems is problematic in nature, problematic for the production of the Real Housewives. That I, I, I understand, but I also here's the counter argument. Um, I do think there should be some type of like mental health uh, oversight on these shows, okay? Um, I think that as humans, as adults that willingly sign up for a show like this, which is why I would never sign up for a show like this, it is, there are things that are par for the course, okay? Historically speaking, Real Housewives of New York has been on for seasons and seasons and seasons. And we like these bitches sloppy and drunk on Bluestone Manor. Mention it all. Legs spread, you know, on a yacht somewhere. Tits out. That's why we watch it. Um, It's very difficult because I find... (laughs) I'm just going to move on, actually. I don't want to touch this one. I don't want to get reamed. I personally do not have a problem with Andy Cohen partaking and offering. I find that to be, like I said, just good hospitality. I'm kind of upset that I was never offered any form of drugs while I was on Watch What Happens Live. I take issue with that. I'm going to make it about me. I don't like that. By the way, anytime I'm at a party and there's any form of drugs, nobody ever fucking offers me drugs, ever. And I think I'm giving Coke vibes. I I actively think, like, I could be a ketamine girly. Never taken it. Not, if I did, I would shout it from the rooftops, okay? And I actually regret not having an experimental drug phase. I'm just, I'm a little too, I like the sauce. And I don't want to fuck with anything that interferes with me having that ice cold, gorgeous martini. Actually, that's not true. I have done drugs in Paris. Heather McMahon roofied me with a trazodone to try to help me sleep. It's an antipsychotic, and I took it, and it worked on me. <laughs> She's like, oh, this will knock you out. I took it. I was, I was 
like my eyeballs were bulging out of my eyes like I was a fucking like I crawled out from the ground like I was Gollum in Lord of the Rings I was like it's not working like it worked for me probably because I need an antipsychotic but it did not work as a sleep aid I call me old school a Benadryl will do a Dramamine don't no pussy shit not the non-drowsy give me a Dramamine and a martini and I'm fucking levitating levitating um so anyways that's that <sighs> fucking Bethany Frankel she's done it again reality reckoning now she's just ruining everything if I just want to go on record here and say if the real housewives franchise gets canceled blood is on Bethany Frankel's hands because she will have single-handedly ruined my life Thank you so much for listening to the Bitch Bible Podcast. See you next week. Ruined my life. This is why we can't have nice things, Taylor Swift. Speaking of Taylor Swift, I read something this morning that Taylor Swift made homemade Pop-Tarts for the starting offensive lineup. Now I'm just like slinging sports commentary. I don't... Is it the offensive lineup? I don't know. The coach for the Milwaukee Chiefs, Super Bowl victors, okay, said that Taylor Swift made homemade motherfucking Pop-Tarts for the team, which is low-key so cute. That bitch loves to bake. You know, sometimes you just see somebody and you know they love to bake and there's usually a headband and there's usually a side braid and there's usually a side pony. I went pretty hard on side braids a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> My post nasal drip. Oh, sometimes you just got to swallow it down. <laughs> it's called being a fucking professional. Um, I had a friend that texted me and was like, yo, bitch, I listened to your first your podcast for the first time in seven years and you were talking mad shit about side braids and you said something to the degree of unless you are churning butter or fucking your brother you shouldn't wear a side braid and then she sent me a photo of her semi-recently wearing a side braid there is a difference a structured loose side braid can be done it's not for me it's a little medieval. It's a little Renaissance fair. It's dorky, quite frankly. But I can lean in. You know, if you're Blake Lively going to the fucking Barbie premiere or the Deadpool premiere and you've got a fucking or the Met ball and you've got a side braid, sure. I'm talking about the assistant manager at an Ann Taylor loft, okay? Going out for a girl's night. <laughs> I'm just going to do that for five seconds. Boom. Um, and she's busting a side braid with a blunt bang. No. No. Just, I stand by it. I stand by it. <sighs> Taylor Swift. Um, I am wondering, as a Pop-Tart enthusiast who hasn't had a Pop-Tart in 15 years, when I tell you, when I was pregnant, all I thought about was strawberry fleckled, freckled Pop-Tarts. The cinnamon Pop-Tarts, I have a bone to pick with people in general who would prefer a cinnamon fucking Pop-Tart over the strawberry Pop-Tarts. If you're a blueberry Pop-Tart, like, you belong in a fucking institution in a straitjacket. Who the fuck? What sick slut of a bitch would prefer the blueberry to the strawberry even the crust, people are like, save the crusts, save the crusts. If you're into Pop-Tart crusts, like passionately, save those crusts. That's the best part. Okay, um, why don't you go get your fucking Amazon box and then slather some smuckers on there because it's basically the same fucking thing. It's all about the middle. It is all about that delicious top coat with like, the kind of corn flaky rainbow sediment, sediment, it's not a sprinkle, it's a sediment, okay? It's a corn syrup sediment. Maybe that'll be the title this week, 
corn syrup sediment. Um, I used to crush strawberry pop tarts when I was in fucking middle school. I liked the Pizza Hut breadsticks with the marinara sauce. I liked the strawberry pop tarts and I would fuck up deep throat a goddamn Snickers ice cream bar. Like when I made it to middle school and my mom like gave me three and a half dollars because she didn't want to deal with my lunch order, I would get so fucking ham on those strawberry pop tarts and I would take the edges off and I would just like fully just insert like a faulty VHS in the mouth that fucking pop tart. So when I heard that T Swifty took time out of her busy life, okay, to make homemade pop tarts, I would like that recipe. I imagine she did like some type, oh my god, you know that she got food coloring and she did it in the team colors because that's so fucking Taylor Swift. I would run over Mother Teresa, reverse forward six times for a taste of that fucking Pop-Tart. I believe that Half-Baked Harvest, speaking of a side braid, I fucking love Tegan from Half-Baked Harvest. She's the best sense of humor. She is to die for. One of the only people that I actually look to for recipes She is rocking a side braid. Now, when I close my eyes, there's definitely a side braid, and I apologize, Tegan. I am pretty sure she had a homemade Pop-Tart recipe at some point in time that I considered making while I was pregnant, but I didn't. The end. Let's move on. Um, What else is going on? I wrote down some topics. Mm, I don't really want to cover any of those. You know who I think about a lot? Jess Glynn. I was in a Pilates class earlier and I always lean on the Jess Glynn. Oh, wait. Oh. I think Andrew worked with Jess Glynn. Well, whatever. She lives in a different fucking country. Who cares? Not my goddamn problem. I always talk about the da 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 no face I'd rather be. Her songs, her discography is toxic positivity. She's got No Place I'd Rather Be, which feels, quite frankly, like she's bursting at the seams, clawing at the walls. She's got, so let me hold your hand, hand, hand. Like, I don't, what do you mean? What, you just want to hold, holding hands? It's like, you know, boundaries, Jess Glynn. And then she also has that other song. Um, What is it? Don't be so hard on yourself, girl. (laughs) I'm mixing up all the melodies. No place to rather be. Don't be so hard on yourself, girl. I there's a song called "Don't be so hard on yourself, girl," or "I'll be there." What is it? Oh my god, Jackie! Come on, think about it. How's the rash? How are we doing on the rash? Look at this. Look at this. Okay, wait. What is it? Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold my hand. What is it? No place I'd rather be. I'll be there. I'll be there for you. I'll be there. I'll be there for you. Okay. Okay, Jess Glenn, you're a wonderful person. Every time I'm out in public and I hear a Jess Glenn song. Every <laughs> every time. This is why I don't want to do video. Oh god, these are my these are my LASIK surgery glasses. <sighs> Come on. Come on, Shimmel. Come on, we're on video now. This is we're a professional. Every time I'm out in public <laughs> and it's just Glenn song. <laughs> like almost have a nervous breakdown because it's so repetitive and it's so positive that it just puts me in the worst mood. If I was ever truly uh, on the brink or lusting for a verbal or physical altercation, like when I hear like, don't be so hard on yourself, girl. And I don't even know how the song goes and I don't want to know how the fucking song goes. I I get like like a twitch in the wrist and I just want to slap somebody anybody I just want to swing my limbs until I like 
whack a fucking ice cream cone out of a child's hand, okay? I, I, I can't do it. It makes me <laughs> irate. What's the other one? Colby Calais. God bless her. God bless Colby Calais. But for fuck's sake, it's as in my toes. And I, I know we've covered this, but that fucking song on the fucking ring. So let me hold your hand. Why? Don't touch me. It's not woke, by the way. 2024, you have to ask permission, okay? And you have to ask about pronouns, which brings me to another fucking thing. I was just at the mall earlier because I wanted to get some sensible basics for Paris. Some undershirts, if you will. So I went to a goddamn Zara. And I was buying just like, I saw on the Tickety Talks that they have like these new viral t-shirts that are like really great for layering. They're like $4, perfect. Um, Fast fashion, Jackie, don't do it. I'm going to take a sip of water because I'm drinking water. Oh, God. The video element is just like really like hyping me up. My adrenaline is through the roof. I'm sweating, sweating. And the rosacea is popping. <clears throat> what was I saying about Zara? Mm, pronouns. Woke. 2024. Okay. Bitch Bible 2.0. The cutest girl at the cash register. She was, she's like, hey, girly, you can come up to register too, paying with cash or card. I'm like, card. She's like, cool. She called me girly, honey, sweetheart, love, twice. All right, love. I mean, it was a very short transaction. I bought two motherfucking t-shirts. And I like, I kind of got attached in like the 33 seconds. Hi, love. Great, girly. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, you could just tap to the left. Great, baby. I mean, I was like, are we, like, this feels very intimate. I feel like we're bonded. I felt like I needed to, like, kind of razzle-dazzle and, like, you know, crank the wattage and ask her about her life and her day and everything. It's it's a good sales tactic. I felt connected and I want to go back. And then I'm like, will you remember me? Will I remember you? Like, should we exchange emails? I don't fucking know. That's my little Zara story. But I'm Kill me, beat me, stab me. If you're watching this video right now, I mean, the rosacea, like I am Alex McCord, okay? From start to finish. <laughs> like, you know, I came in here looking like, you know, like windswept and just like, I just woke up. And now I look like Gary Busey's fucking little sister that got hit by a bus and beat with an ugly stick. And a rosacea flare up to fucking boot. I'm just going to put a little bit more lippy on. A little lip gloss just for the girlies. You know what I need? A Beyonce fan. A silent Beyonce fan. So that I can just look like a busted trash rat slut corpse. But then I'll have like a Beyonce. Like I just need like a wind factor. I need a chill factor. I need an ice cube in my under tit. And I need a fucking fan because I am sweating. I'm sweltering. Speaking of kibitzing at checkout, um, I skimmed a headline earlier and there is a new thing at a market somewhere in the Midwest, assumedly, that they're offering a separate checkout line for the elderly who want to kibitz. So it's a bit of a slower pace. There's a little more, you know, chatty chatty. And so you've got the self-checkout for the shoplifters. You've got the regular checkout. And then you've got the, it kind of seems ageist to me. Then you've got the slow checkout line. And I mean, I can see the appeal. You know what's annoying about me? <laughs> I'll just let you fill in the blanks there. Um, I will publicly annihilate this, but privately... I will be front and center at the chatty checkout line because I have Tourette's and physically can't shut the fuck up. Andrew looks at me all the time and he's like, for someone who hates to talk, it is quite literally all you do. I am bleeding out every time I hit that fucking Gelson's. I have no speeds. It's never just like, hi, how are you? Good, thanks. 
And then I just, you know, tap my card. It's like, well, I mean, it is sweltering outside. Could you dry? My tits are sweating. Jesus Christ. They need to crank the AC in here. Speaking of which, my AC. And then I just keep going and going and going. And I'm like, what? Who hurt me? Why am I doing this? Get off the ride. Dim the lights. Dim the lights. It's exhausting. Tap dancing for my life. Just trying to buy a bulb of funnel, which I did today because I'm making a roasted tomato soup, honey. Woo! It's my pre-flight soup. Um, when I touch down in Paris, I am going to hit it hard. I want beef tartare seeping out of my pores, okay? I want baked goods. I want vodka. I want Billicart Samone Rosé by the bottle with a straw. I want bread. I want butter. I want all of it. And I just want to shove it down my throat so hard and fast. <laughs> but before that, we're detoxing. So that what I do is I get like some rusted vegetables. It's really annoying that I blew up my Trader Joe's, my local Trader Joe's, because of the man with one arm with a hook who snagged my Loewe bag. I can't even go back there. I have not gone back there once. So to go to a Trader Joe's for like sensible, reasonably reasonable pressed, prepackaged vegetables is a whole undertaking. It's like a 30-minute detour for me to acquire said vegetables. And, you know, time is fucking money. So whatever. Um, I roast zucchinis, Campari tomatoes, because they're low acidity. Learned that during pregnancy with my heartburn. Um, an onion, fennel bulb, butternut squash, a garlic bulb, sliced drizzle. You could just Google roasted vegetable soup. Tons of seasoning thyme, oregano, salt, pepper, <laughs> roasty toasty. I put it in the blender with a little low sodium chicken stock, tons of turmeric, tons of turmeric everywhere, all over the place. And then if you're feeling wild, crazy, and quite frankly, slutty, you hit it with a little bit of heavy cream. It's to die for. It's delicious. That and arugula salad, get out of here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Speaking of soup, <laughs> it's so fucking embarrassing <laughs> to be looking into a tripod while my son is crying his balls off like three feet away. And I'm like, speaking of soup, Stephen Baldwin went on Instagram earlier and asked for prayers for Haley and Justin Bieber, which feels... Mm, I don't love that. I don't love it for whatever reason. I don't care if it's it's well-intentioned or not. Get off fucking Instagram. Is that her uncle or her brother? Or No, not her brother. Her, It's her dad. It's her dad, right? There's a lot of Baldwin brothers. And let me tell you, I don't fuck with the Baldwin brothers. Alec Baldwin, besides the hilaria of it all, <sighs> loved him and it's complicated. A Hans Zimmer, Nancy Myers perfection. Alec Baldwin feels ragey to me. There's something behind the eyes that I just don't love. Um, all the Baldwin brothers, really. But Stephen Baldwin, yeah, turning to Instagram saying like prayers for Justin and Haley, there is no context or situation that I co-sign on that. I think it's weird. I think it's exploitive. Gatekeep, hoard, exploit, sell out all of those things see we're bringing it round we're bringing it round um Haley and Justin I hope that they're good and happy Justin Bieber feels like a real handful to be married to and like god bless Haley Bieber she can't blink without the selenators just ripping her goddamn ass apart and yes have I well intentionally bullied her for her bathroom series yes rightfully so it's tragic it's not even her fucking bathroom they're like let's make bagels like people just do that for fun just like a hot tip some people just eat bagels let's have margaritas and chicken wings oh girl you're crazy you're nuts Woo! um it's all just very weird and it's really just it feels like 
bicycling through quicksand. You know, we're just, it's not sticking, it's not landing, it's not slapping, it's not fucking, and it's not goddamn working. But I wish the best for them, and, you know, they'll both be fine, no matter what. I don't know what Stephen Baldwin was alluding to. Is it trouble in paradise? I don't know. Is it financial? I do worry about Justin Bieber's finances. I don't know why. Allegedly, I have no information, but I worry about them a little bit. I also worry about his casual, his casual wear, quite frankly. Um, The Drew of it all, the socks, the dreadlocks, the slippers, the Crocs, the Spants. It's a lot of bold choices um, and not a lot of chutzpah to back it up. So it feels lost and listless. That's just my psychiatric assessment of his outerwear. But best of luck to both of you. Love you like sisters. And on that note, I am going to go take um, some ice cubes to the tits and do a little polar plunge and, uh, you know, just shut the fuck up. Thank you all so much for listening and watching the Bitch Bible Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us five stars on iTunes and I'll see you next week. Bye. Hold on. Stop and end. (laughs) Alistair, keep this in. This is, I'm like Valerie Cherish. Why isn't it ending?